Hi, everybody. I'm Lori Matsukawa along with Greg Copeland. Greg, you have just uh, worked on a series of stories about Ohio class submarines, the Trident submarines that are at uh, Kitsap, uh, you, Naval Base Kitsap here in Washington State. A lot of people that we've had, you and I have lived here most of our lives, so we've known about this, but we have so many people who've moved e into this area yeah. uh, in the last 10, 15 years. A lot of people don't know that there are nuclear subs right here, based here, and there are the two ends of the country. You have some in Georgia and some out at Bangor, and we just kind of went in to try to get a, a little peek inside that world. Tell us a little bit about the actual uh, submarine itself. It's called an Ohio-class submarine, right. and what does it do? They, right, they're the biggest of the U.S. Navy. They, uh, the Ohio-class, and there are a couple different versions of them. You have the, uh, the Tridents, basically. They're nicknamed Boomers, or, or tridents, but the tridents really for the uh, armament of the missiles. And mm -hmm. they each carry 20 of these uh, guided missiles that can launch multiple nuclear weapons at quite a range. And when, you know, if those were to impact, the, the, the boom that they would make is kind of where you get the nickname, uh, the, the boomers, mm -hmm. uh, hence our name for this uh, series, the boomers of Banger. And they're incredibly large, but until you're on one, if you were able to pull it out of the water, it would be one thing. Uh, and that's why we made an infographic, but they're mostly underwater. So you see about one third of the sub, but they're 560 feet long, almost as tall as the Space Needle. But once so you get on so it doesn't seem So like if that. you stood up one of these submarines up, right. upright, it would be almost as tall almost as the Space tall. Needle. Right, and w but once you get on it, it is, it is not a, a, a space for somebody my height, 6'4". I mean, most of the guys down there are 6'2 or smaller, and there's a reason for that, because there's no wasted space on board. Mm -hmm. And it is every piece and part of that is utilized, and it's all sectioned off in, in different floors, and it just doesn't seem that big, but you can get lost in one really easily if you don't don't know where you're going. It's a, it's a large submarine, and how many uh, sailors are on there? You've got about, <clears throat> excuse me, you've got about 160, 150 to 100, well, probably about 160. So you usually have 140 to 145 enlisted and another 15 uh, of the officers. Mm -hmm. And they'll be gone for, you know, about two months at a time. I, I was going to ask how long is their deployment? 70 days is about the deployment. And that's the time they're actually on the water. Mm -hmm. And each deployment is three and a half months, but there's a lot of work to get done and loading the sub up and the transfer. And, and there are two different crews to every sub. And this is, I, you know, I didn't know this. There's a blue crew and a gold crew. And when one's on, the ship is taking control of the sub. The other one's training at home, seeing the misses, seeing the, you know, whatever <laughs> right. that looks like. And then they <clears throat> they swap every three and a half months. Now, I, I'm assuming that you need some very specialized training to be on board an Ohio-class submarine. So where do they go to get that training? That's what they do at Bangor, and they do a lot of that. And that's what this first piece was really about before they ever really get on a sub. Some of the stuff they go through. And uh, the story that aired tonight, and it will air again uh, later on tonight, and you'll be able to find it online as well. This one really explains what they go through just to be on board. So let's take a look at that piece. They are the titans of the U.S. Navy submarine fleet. Our mission prevents coercion by threat of nuclear attack. 560 feet of pure deterrence. This is an Ohio-class sub, nicknamed a Trident, for its armament of Trident ballistic missiles, each carrying enough nuclear warheads to give an enemy pause. The ultimate weapon and ultimate peacekeeper, residing in your backyard since the early 1980s. Banger's sub base isn't exactly a secret, yet they don't exactly leave out the welcome mat either. Security here is tight. 7,700 acres of Hood Canal, home to 10 Ohio-class subs and 10,000 active duty, civilian, or contract personnel. Unless you work on base, this is not a view many of us get. These are fair water planes, so it's one means that we have for controlling going up and down on the ship. It's not until you're down on the docks, up close and personal, that you realize just how big this boat is. To put it in perspective, if you put two football fields end to end, it would measure just shy of the 87-yard line on the second field. If you stood it on end, it would almost be as tall as the Space Needle. And it's 50 feet longer than the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers based in nearby Everett. Unlike this ship, where its mere presence can make an impression, a sub's ability to slide beneath the surface with 20 nuclear warheads makes it downright scary. But before sailors ever step foot on board, they start here at the Trident training facility. Grab all tools and get on station. Grab all tools and get on station, aye. 
this particular trainer, they train A school, which is a, essentially an initial entry school for the, the sailors that are coming in. So there's a lot of classes they'll teach that particular thing, like from, from the ground up. Understand now! This is the torpedo tube lab. It's essentially a mock-up of half a torpedo room. It's one of three trainers we were given access to. There are more than 50 here, replicating every single function on the subs in a classroom environment. 14 members, continue. Continue on. It's a calculated conversation as a team leader follows the script to make sure it's literally by the book. Drink set, drink set. Mark. When it comes to launching a 3,700 pound Mark 48 acoustic homing torpedo set, set. with a 650 pound high explosive warhead, no there's no room for error. So she's done still the pivotry. There are typically two four hour sessions a day with 40 hours of total training before they're ready for the real thing. From torpedoes to transportation, our next stop is the bridge. It is a giant simulator with a 360 degree view, so realistic, after a few minutes, you'll start to sway. Bridge contact manager, I wait. Here they learn above water navigation, both into and out of port, watching for boat traffic or any other hazards, because slowing down 33 million pounds doesn't happen quickly. Different programs prepare them for any port in the Pacific, so wherever they surface, they'll already have working knowledge of the landscape. We're going to do a series of up and down angles. This is affectionately called the dive and drive. This is where sailors learn to drive while submerged and run through a series of steep angle maneuvers. Once we stabilize at 200 feet, then we're going to achieve a 20 degree down angle. We're going to go back down to 600 feet. There are two main reasons for this exercise, not just for safety, but for silence underwater. If you're moving around and, and something falls and hits the ground, that, that makes noise and that gets put out into the ocean, right? So we want to make sure everything is, is stowed correctly. We could have 200 feet using a two zero degree up angle. Every order given here in the trainer is exactly what you would hear on a sub. Two five zero. In a little more than one minute, the sub has ascended 400 feet. 600 feet. Then it's back down to 600. Once we get back down to 600 feet, we're going to simulate uh, a situation in which we'd operate the emergency blow system. 600 feet to the surface in one minute flat. Emergency blow. As the crew leans forward to compensate for the severe up angle. Oh Topside footage is hard to come by, but you get the idea from the 1990 movie, The Hunt for Red October. All this training prepares these men and women for the real thing, life aboard a Trident submarine. About 160 of America's finest will spend three and a half months on each deployment. They'll have a crew on the submarine out at sea while that other crew is here training and, and getting ready to get certified to take the boat back to ensure that the boat is out at sea as much as possible. Constant training to maintain constant readiness on board one of the most revered and powerful weapons on the planet. They are the okay, we just saw the story that aired earlier tonight on King 5 News. We're also going to rerun this story on King 5 News at 9 on Kong and King 5 News at 11 on King. The question that one of our viewers had is, how many square feet does each sailor have on board that submarine? Not much. <laughs> not much. I'll tell you, there's not a whole lot of personal space. Now, think about it this way. You have the, what I say, 155 to 160 uh, people on board. Mm -hmm. It's 560 feet long, yeah. but it's very compartmentalized. Right. You are working in three shifts. So while some are sleeping, some are eating, some are, you know, you, some working. are working. You, you know, there's time for downtime, and there's a, quite a bit of, uh, how did the commander put it? Um, it's like a little there's, dance. There's a lot of mingling. Right. You it know, is right? Well, little... it's very much military. <laughs> it's very you know, straight to the point. So you have three shifts that keeps the sub going 24-7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so you have three people who do everything basically and you sleep in shifts. The, so the, the, the story that'll run tomorrow and I'll tell you more about it in a minute. I, I talk about just where they, the birthing area, the, the mm -hmm. beds, <laughs> they're tiny. I mean, there's not a lot. <laughs> like you would have a hard time sleeping in oh, one would, of those berths, right? It would not be good. Okay. I, I don't know that I'd go cl get claustrophobic on one. I wouldn't have it as my first choice. Okay. And some people, you know, this is what they want to do right. and they can they can put in for that. Um, w you know, when they enlist, they can ask to be on a sub and then they have to go through, um, you know, their, their different specialties. And mm -hmm. I think they have to be selected from there. I was, I was trying I'm to ask sure that they, you have to have some requirements to go there. In that training, video, the training facility that you showed, I was amazed at the bridge, this um, simulated bridge that you said, 
<laughs> where you could actually almost feel the, the water moving beneath you. It was amazing because it looked like a 360 view of right. the water. And it's it hard really to show you that with a camera because there's literally no room up there. And there were three or four guys already up there training. And but I was up there for a couple of minutes and you start to actually sway like you're yeah. on the water. It's surreal. It's like a massive IMAX. Right. And it's just so they can get the feel and they're up there with their binoculars and training. So literally any port that they pull into, they will have working knowledge ahead of time because right. they have a simulator for it. Wow, see, and, and that was the thing about this training. It was very precise. There was a sign that said, train like you fight. fight right. And so it's very precise that it, what they're doing and learning there, they're absolutely going to recreate it in a real situation. It has to be automatic. Yeah. And also in the story coming up tomorrow, this is where we, we go on board. And we, we spent about, I want to say about four, maybe four hours, maybe five hours with mm -hmm. them. They gave us a little bit <laughs> longer uh, than they intended. We went through the training facility for a couple of hours mm -hmm. and just to highlight those and get the shots we needed because we wanted to be thorough with it. And I asked a ton of questions and they were so patient with me. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and then going through, getting on the sub, that was a whole different, okay, you can shoot this, don't show video of this. And then we had to go through. And there's somebody constantly watching, you know, over the photographer's shoulder to see what he's shooting and making sure everything's okay. And then okay. we're like, hey, just in case you shot any of this, make sure you don't use that. Don't so, use that, don't use right. this. So right. we were in communication with the public affairs officer um, constantly. I must have sent right. him 50 emails with, I wanted to get everything correct. I was like, please, I do not want to, right. if anything, I don't want to disappoint the naval community, right. uh, especially, uh, especially subgroup nine. And you know, I know people who are on boomers, right. of course, you, you want to you want to have them say you want to be hey, precise. nice jobs. <laughs> you want to be precise. Okay, we have another question here from Jimmy that asks, "What is the food like? What do they eat during deployment?" And if you want to be a little cagey on this, because this is what you cover tomorrow, that's fine too. But uh, a lot of people want to know. You know, we they have a full. I mean, I'll tell you, they have a, a giant. Obviously, they have a, a chef or, or a couple of cooks on board, mm -hmm. and they have a giant freezer and a massive refrigerator. They pack, and it's right next to. Uh, um, I can't remember what it's, what it's called there. I want to say mm -hmm. mess hall, but I know it's not right. But, you know, the, the galley <coughs> has... food. I mean... Yeah, the galley has got to be big, but, you know, they eat like... The galley, long... thank you. I could not think of okay, the word. They eat... It's not, you know, it's not that big. I would say maybe, boy, if I had to think about when we were in there, maybe 10 by 20, maybe mm -hmm. maybe 15 by maybe 15 And by you're 20. talking meatloaf and mashed potatoes, that kind yeah, of thing? I think they, yeah, I think they... You know, we didn't... Well, while we were there, and again, crew was just getting ready to, to put out and uh, they, at that time, they were not eating while we were there. But the, you know, they have fresh fruit hanging there, and then they have. Mm -hmm. all, but they're all prepared meals. It's not okay. like they're eating some, you know, military rations or the what are they, the MREs? It's they <laughs> so eat well. Uh, my question is, what is their mission? Is their mission to <coughs> sneak around uh, the world and terrorize people? Do okay. they have, what is their mission? It's interesting because when we first started posting this and people were like, why are we giving all our military secrets away? And they're not sharing anything with us that's not, that's not public, of okay. course. So when we talk about the torpedoes on board and the specifics, I mean, granted, there is what is official you know, the official, how fast can they go? How far can they go? Uh, how many of this or that? There's going to be an official, and then there's going to be, well, it might go a little faster, or it might dive a little deeper. Uh, but, you know, we just went with everything official. That was official. Right. Okay. And so, from the Navy, their, their number one deterrence, and this, this you'll get from, uh, from the very top, and I think uh, the Secretary of State just talked about this uh, recently, was mm -hmm. it's nuclear deterrence. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting right now that and this just happened to be that you have President Trump meeting with Kim Jong Un this week to to go back over, you know, whether North Korea is going to, you know, really let go of trying to Their develop nuclear, nuclear program. Right. And you have huh. a lot of experts who say, well, it's never going to happen. <clears throat> the the mission of the Ohio class sub is to basically let everybody know this is what we have, and we are going to be out there, and please don't start any trouble. I mean, it's, it's to deter other countries from not just getting nuclear, but using it on us. And so far, nobody has. Nobody has. Okay. We have a question from John. How did Greg Copeland fit in a hatch? Are there physical size restrictions for sailors? You kind of alluded to that. You can't be a very tall person and not, work on a it's submarine. It's not comfortable. Okay, so I'm, I'm 6'4", 230, and I did not fit on it very well. And I didn't see anybody okay. else. The commander said there was, he was, I think, 6'2", and there were a couple of guys who were broader, okay. And sure. it's, it's, you know, I don't know that an, an attack class sub would be very comfortable. 
this one, it, it's big enough that you can move around, but boy, you've got to be, you've got to know where you're walking. And I would imagine it takes sailors who have to come on one for the first time because all I kept yeah. doing was looking around, what am I going to hit? What am I going to yeah, hit? Yeah, I was going to say, did you ever hit your head? <laughs> no, I was really he careful. He didn't hit his head. That's really good. But we talked to the to the uh, the hospital corpsman, and uh, and he talked about, you know, I got to treat people, and they bang themselves up, or, yeah. you know, they've got a cut or a flu, whatever right. else. But, you know, people hit their heads on things, and there are sharp, sharp objects around, so it's it's obviously a concern on, on something like that. One thing we have on king5.com is a graphic animation. Right. Tell us a little it's bit pretty, about what we're going to see here. It's, it's pretty slick, and it was really neat without getting, I kind of gets you into the detail. We can talk about what their mission is. We can kind of show you what it's like without, you know, it's just really a taste. I, I could never say that, oh, this is what it's like to live on board mm -hmm. a nuclear submarine. I haven't done it. Okay. Uh, and they're not going to share too much of that. But we can tell you what it's like when we talked a little bit about, oh, it's this long. Mm -hmm. well, we, you know, we compare it to a football field or the Space Needle just to give people an idea of the scope okay. and what it's like. And then their armament. All right, let's I mean, take a look. Yeah. I want to see that. Let's take a look at that graphic. The Ohio class nuclear submarine. At 560 feet long and 42 feet wide, it's among the biggest in the world. Nearly as long as two football fields, or stood on end, almost as tall as Seattle Space Needle. The giant sub checks in at more than 33 million pounds, or 16,764 tons. Its nuclear reactor fuels this underwater Titan for 20 years, pushing her through the depths in excess of 25 knots. Its range limited only by the amount of food it can carry for its crew, usually 15 officers and about 140 enlisted. This silent sub can travel undetected to a depth of 800 feet, officially. It's armed with a plethora of Mark 48 advanced capability torpedoes, each 19 feet long and 3,700 pounds that can be fired from four separate tubes and guided to their target in excess of five miles. But the main event is pointed at the sky. 20 Trident long-range ballistic missiles measuring 44 feet long and seven feet wide that can be fired while the sub is submerged. Each comprises a three-stage rocket that can propel it through the sky at nearly four miles per second, or 227 miles in a single minute. And with a range of more than 4,600 miles, they deliver a powerful payload, each armed with multiple nuclear warheads that can independently be guided to multiple targets. The mere thought of that is enough to make any foreign enemy think twice about starting trouble. Okay, so those in the know, I'll, I'll just point out a couple of things that people have asked about or might comment on. Um, the nuclear warheads there. The only graphic we could find had six on it instead of eight, so I used the word multiple, but there are, are eight. Uh, and then the missile tubes, there are 24 on Ohio-class submarines. And there's a difference between, they're all Ohio-class. And you have the Tridents and what some might not call, call Tridents anymore. So the SSBNs, mm -hmm. the SS is for submarine, the B is for ballistic, which is the missiles. And there used to be 24, there are now only 20, and that was part of a uh, 2010, I think, part of a nuclear treaty. I'm not going to get that specific. Mm -hmm. um, so they, so they reduce the they number reduce of... them, and they reduce the amount, the number. So okay. you now have two ships that are SSGNs, and those are for guided. Those are loaded with, I think, 154 Tomahawk missiles instead of the 24, or instead of even 20 of the uh, ballistic missiles. And you have so eight Tridents, technically Tridents, although the other two are sometimes still called Tridents. The two guided missiles. Uh, at Bangor, and then you have the same, I believe, down in, uh, in Kings Bay, Georgia, where mm -hmm. they keep the other set. So, just in case somebody was wondering, why are there? I saw 24 things. You'll notice that only 20 of the hatches, the doors, open, open. up on top. So <laughs> I did know that. It just it's you, when in a story like that, you're getting so far into the weeds, you have mm -hmm. to be careful. Something like this, we can talk more about it. Okay, we have another question from Lance, who says, uh, "Do you have access to social media underwater?" Oh no. Okay, so this is I, I, I didn't know this either. So when we came. To the base. Mm -hmm. First thing we had to do was give up our phones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> None of that. I'm not Any surprised. other electronic devices. Then we had to uh, basically let them take the serial number down of our camera. And then we wanted to use a GoPro. So, like on the fly, they approved that. Then we could take that in. But then we still had to go through, I'll just put it this, there are multiple layers of security mm -hmm. to, to get in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are absolutely no electronic devices on board. Okay, so, so we didn't get them back for a few hours. And so, families, you know, when, when the crew's yeah. gone, they have no contact with them. 
And so I have for been for four months. You can't talk <coughs> to dad or mom. Or well, what? it's it's the time they're actually on sub. So okay. while while they're still working, so that's usually I want to say about an average of seventy. It's more than two months, so okay. about seventy days. Okay. You have literally no contact with them, so they don't know when they're coming home. And that may you know any a, a number of things could happen. So they mm -hmm. may be back about this time, but maybe there's something wrong with one of the other boats that's about to go out, and so they've got to stay out maybe a little longer than expected, so you just got two weeks added to your deployment mm -hmm. because they're, they're fixing something here or something happened. So it, it's variable, that's why it's just an average. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I don't have any other, oh, we have a question from Kim. The sub is used as a deterrent, but have they ever fired any missiles from it during wartime? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, and I would say I would say no. I don't I believe anybody has launched. There have been practice firings, and I know that actually on the sub we were on, they had marked, they had one particular missile tube, and you'll see more of this tomorrow. Uh, and I don't know if you'll see that actual spot, but they've got a, like a, I don't know, wasn't a sticker, it was a big marking basically. Like, like hey, mark? we fired one, the blue crew fired one out of this uh, missile tube, and you know, the gold crew fired one. I, I can't remember if they had the dates on them, mm -hmm. but you, you don't fire missiles like that very often. I and mean, certainly, you know, with the, not with the nuclear warhead. And on certainly them. not the nuclear ones, right. but the ones but have who, to, have, who have, are just regular guided sure. missiles. And there are, there's so many protocols that go into that and we we get into a little bit more of that kind of the the who's on board and you know what do they do and kind of hear from them and again it doesn't get you, you can only go in depth so much when mm -hmm. you're talking uh, to guys I, I would love to have you know put a mic on one of the guys and just follow around for you know six hours but okay. <laughs> maybe he's not gonna let me do okay, that so right let away. me do let me do the math here we have how many sh how many submarines and how many of them are trident versus with guided you missiles 10 you have 10 ohio class 10 and eight of them are ssbn's and so you do 20 times 8 160 mm -hmm. right 160 missiles okay. if you really want to count the missiles all right it only takes one and right? then the other the other the other two are, are those are, are the, guided the guided missiles and those i believe have 154 tomahawks per boat so it's 280 tomahawks yeah, roughly it's, right so it's a lot okay and all of this information is approved for release right. by the Navy. Absolutely. We are not it's, giving it, you nope, anything that public. you would not be able to know. But their number one thing, what they would like to get is like, a good day is when you never have to worry, you never have mm -hmm. to fire a shot. I mean, that's mm -hmm. and that's really the point I wanted to bring home, and I think that's what they would like people to know. It's like, if we're doing our job, we don't have to fire any shots. We're just, we're there to be that that presence, that deterrence, mm -hmm. and so, you know, if. If you're firing shots or you have to launch one, that's you know, that's a bad day for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, if you want to see uh, Greg's story tonight, it's going to be on King 5 News at 9 on Kong, King 5 News at 11. Or you have friends maybe who aren't watching here on Facebook. On King, yeah, or let them know via Facebook, hey, you can watch it. You can also see the story on our website, king5.com. And I think they're putting it on YouTube. And, and face face. I'm sure it's all on Facebook. Facebook. We have it everywhere, just in case. And you part two, the parts about the the births and the galley and all that kind of good stuff, like living on board the submarine, is part two. That'll and that be tomorrow airs night. Tomorrow at 6:30. That's when you know first airing. Then again later on as well. And I, I welcome your feedback. I will say this: so far, from a friend who's on one of those boomers, he said, "Great, great job. I'll take that." <laughs> and from the public affairs officer, he's like, "Good job." Best, if, best coverage I've seen so far. And again, I, I know we can't get too far right. into the weeds about stuff. Mm -hmm. I can't really say this is exactly what life is like, but it was neat to get a look into that world. I, I mean, I learned a, a lot about something that's been in our backyard for, forever, exactly. my, practically not my entire life, but a lot of it anyway, and I just didn't really know anything about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, like you said, are new to the area. <laughs> they don't know about Naval Base Kitsap. They don't know about these Ohio-class submarines that are here or how uh, powerful they right. really are. Um, in fact, there was a, some statistic many years ago that said that many one submarine is more powerful than some countries oh, around sure. the world Absolutely. in terms of firepower. So that's the kind of this power you're talking about. This is easily one of the most powerful weapons this country has, and I would say that that is in the. I'm, I'm not going to say this is the most powerful weapon in the world. It is one of the absolutely mm -hmm. anything with that kind of armament is. But it's again because of that, and you can kind of parade that quietly, but not so quietly, and that. That is your deterrent. Right. You it is deterrent. Right. Its mission you is deterrence. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, Greg, uh, we're looking forward to seeing the story again tonight, part two tomorrow. And for those of you who are just joining us, if you would like to see the story right now, uh, we're going to roll it for you again. Here you go. Here we go. 
They are the titans of the U.S. Navy submarine fleet. Our mission prevents coercion by threat of nuclear attack. 560 feet of pure deterrence. This is an Ohio-class sub nicknamed a Trident for its armament of Trident ballistic missiles, each carrying enough nuclear warheads to give an enemy pause. The ultimate weapon and ultimate peacekeeper residing in your backyard since the early 1980s. Banger Sub Base isn't exactly a secret, yet they don't exactly leave out the welcome mat either. Security here is tight. 7,700 acres of Hood Canal, home to 10 Ohio-class subs and 10,000 active duty, civilian, or contract personnel. Unless you work on base, this is not a view many of us get. These are fair water plans, so it's one means that we have for controlling going up and down on the ship. It's not until you're down on the docks, up close and personal, that you realize just how big this boat is. To put it in perspective, if you put two football fields end to end, it would measure just shy of the 87 yard line on the second field. If you stood it on end, it would almost be as tall as the Space Needle. And it's 50 feet longer than the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers based in nearby Everett. Unlike this ship, where its mere presence can make an impression, a sub's ability to slide beneath the surface with 20 nuclear warheads makes it downright scary. But before sailors ever step foot on board, they start here at the Trident training facility. Grab all tools and get on station. Grab all tools and get on station, aye. Grab all tools and get on station, aye. This particular trainer, they train A school, which is a, essentially an initial entry school for the, the sailors that are coming in. So there's a lot of classes they'll teach that particular thing, like from, from the ground up. Understand, no! This is the torpedo tube lab. It's essentially a mock-up of half a torpedo room. It's one of three trainers we were given access to. There are more than 50 here replicating every single function on the subs in a classroom environment. It's a calculated conversation as a team leader follows the script to make sure it's literally by the book. Drain set, drain set. Mark. When it comes to launching a 3,700 pound Mark 48 acoustic homing torpedo set, set. with a 650 pound high explosive warhead, no there's no room for error. So she's done study pivotry. There are typically two four-hour sessions a day with 40 hours of total training before they're ready for the real thing. From torpedoes to transportation, our next stop is the bridge. It is a giant simulator with a 360-degree view, so realistic, after a few minutes, you'll start to sway. Bridge contact manager, I wait. Here they learn above water navigation both into and out of port, watching for boat traffic or any other hazards because slowing down 33 million pounds doesn't happen quickly. Different programs prepare them for any port in the Pacific, so wherever they surface, they'll already have working knowledge of the landscape. We're gonna do a series of up and down angles. This is affectionately called the dive and drive. This is where sailors learn to drive while submerged and run through a series of steep angle maneuvers. Once we stabilize at 200 feet, then we're gonna achieve a 20 degree down angle, we're gonna go back down to 600 feet. There are two main reasons for this exercise, not just for safety, but for silence underwater. If you're moving around and, and something falls and hits the ground, that, that makes noise and that gets put out in the ocean, right? So we want to make sure everything is, is stowed correctly. Make it up 200 feet using a 20 degree up angle. Every order given here in the trainer is exactly what you would hear on a sub. Two five zero. In a little more than one minute, the sub has ascended 400 feet. Yeah, 600 feet. Then it's back down to 600. Once we get back down to 600 feet, we're going to simulate uh, a situation in which we'd operate the emergency blow system. 600 feet to the surface in one minute flat. Emergency blow. As the crew leans forward to compensate for the severe up angle. Oh Topside footage is hard to come by, but you get the idea from the 1990 movie, The Hunt for Red October. All this training prepares these men and women for the real thing. Life aboard a Trident submarine. About 160 of America's finest will spend three and a half months on each deployment. They'll have a crew on the submarine out at sea while that other crew is here training and, and getting ready to get certified to take the boat back to ensure that the boat is out at sea as much as possible. Constant training to maintain constant readiness on board one of the most revered and powerful weapons on the planet. The Ohio-class nuclear submarine. 
At 560 feet long and 42 feet wide, it's among the biggest in the world, nearly as long as two football fields, or stood on end, almost as tall as Seattle's Space Needle. The giant sub checks in at more than 33 million pounds, or 16,764 tons. Its nuclear reactor fuels this underwater Titan for 20 years, pushing her through the depths in excess of 25 knots. Its range limited only by the amount of food it can carry for its crew, usually 15 officers and about 140 enlisted. This silent sub can travel undetected to a depth of 800 feet, officially. It's armed with a plethora of Mark 48 advanced capability torpedoes, each 19 feet long and 3,700 pounds, that can be fired from four separate tubes and guided to their target in excess of five miles. But the main event is pointed at the sky. 20 Trident long-range ballistic missiles measuring 44 feet long and 7 feet wide that can be fired while the sub is submerged. Each comprises a three-stage rocket that can propel it through the sky at nearly 4 miles per second, or 227 miles in a single minute. And with a range of more than 4,600 miles, they deliver a powerful payload, each armed with multiple nuclear warheads that can independently be guided to multiple targets. The mere thought of that is enough to make any foreign enemy think twice about starting trouble.